Welcome to a Legendarium special about John of Ardern, Medieval England's first medical writer. John of Ardern came into the world during the year 1307 on the Ardern Estates in Newark, England. Relatively little is known of his early life, save that he trained as a surgeon. This suggests that he came from a family of some means, but not enough to secure a university education. In the medical hierarchy of the time, university-educated physicians who dealt with the four humors in the human body saw themselves as above mere surgeons, whom they likened to craftsmen. Nonetheless, Ardern learned enough Latin to talk about medicine and then served as a military surgeon in France during the early stages of the Hundred Years' War. Most likely, he served in the retinue of John of Gaunt, the younger brother of King Edward III and uncle to King Richard II. John of Ardern tended wounded soldiers during campaigns where armies used gunpowder for the first time. There, John of Ardern continued his education, sometimes making mistakes along the way. Once he sprinkled leg wounds with powdered arsenic, which ate through the patient's bones, which obviously did not improve their condition. Thankfully, John of Ardern changed to a dressing made from mutton fat, which he dubbed Solus Populi, or the People's Balm. He also made a salve for arrow wounds called the Blood of Love, or Song d'Amour. He recommended making it from the blood of a maiden aged 20 years, drawn at the full moon in Virgo around late August and early September. Much medieval medicine involved some astrology mixed in. He then mixed the blood with myrrh, aloes, and then boiled the whole mess in olive oil. And if a virgin woman could not be found, Ardern devised a red powder, writing with a rather moralistic tone, For now, in this time, virgins come full seldom to twenty years. However, John of Ardern really made his reputation by devising a treatment for an embarrassing and painful ailment suffered by many knights. Knights spent hours days, even weeks in the saddle, which caused fistula in ano, a painful abscess between the base of the spine and the rectum. Ardern used a surgical means to treat this terrible illness, cutting the abscess, using opiates to dull the pain, and then he wrote his method down. His great innovation involved avoiding the corrosive aftercare treatment used by other surgeons. A great believer in cleanliness, Ardern advised against meddling with wounds using dressings, and simply allow the body to heal itself. This writing is one of the earliest known professional medical articles, intended to instruct fellow surgeons in the new methods. After coming home, John of Ardern bore witness to the horrors of the Black Death, which swept through England during the years 1348 and 1349. Unlike other doctors, Ardern did not pretend to have a cure. Indeed, he urged other doctors to avoid promising cures they could not deliver, or else they would ruin their reputations. During this time, John of Ardern came to specialize in herbal remedies. He treated gout with a poultice of green laurel and honey mixed with the lard of a male pig. Once, John of Ardern claimed to have cured a gouty abbot overnight with a single application. Unfortunately, John of Ardern also applied a plaster of pigeon dung and honey on the side to cure kidney stones, which very likely did not work. To cure hangovers suffered by guests who overindulged in wine during the 1352 wedding of Prince Lionel, he devised an astrological charm. 
Some of these cures might sound outlandish to modern ears, but the sickly men of the kingdom sought him out. Indeed, the astrological charm in 1352 worked so well, supposedly, that John of Ardern also used it to treat epilepsy. Still writing, at 70 years of age, John of Ardern became the first man to urge surgeons to trust their own experience, rather than simply following the ancient lore of Galen and the Arabic surgeons. In these pages, John of Ardern advised his fellow doctors on bedside manners. He urged them to tell funny stories, to avoid whispering with relatives in corners for fear of causing patients anxiety, and to avoid becoming too familiar with ladies of the house. Subjects in his writings include herbs and their uses, eye problems, kidney diseases, hemorrhoids, phantom pregnancies, and gout, along with much else. A great many recipes and charms are scattered throughout Ardern's books. His process for distilling juniper oil involves placing two earthenware pots on top of one another. The lower pot is buried in the ground, and small sticks of juniper are placed in the top pot. A fire is made around this top pot, and the oil is distilled by going through an iron pipe to the lower receptacle. The resulting oil is said to be good for aches, gout, and a mysterious disease called paralysis. His best-known book, The Practica Curage, or Practical Surgery, formed the basis of surgical instruction in late medieval medical schools. Drawing on his experiences, Ardern vividly described many case histories of patients that he treated successfully so that younger surgeons could learn from him. We do not know for certain when John of Ardern died, save that he retired from medicine and life sometime after 1373. There is no record that he married or had children, but he did leave a great legacy. More than 50 medieval manuscripts, including John's texts, survive today, and 36 of them include 250 illustrations, among the more striking features of the Ardern books. They show procedures, herbs, tools, and some strange symbolic imagery. For example, growths are represented by images of owls, because in Latin, both a growth and an owl are called buboes. While originally written in Latin, these works would be translated into English to reach an ever wider audience and thus strengthen the legacy of John of Ardern. That wraps things up for this episode of The Legendarium. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, press like. If you want to see more, press subscribe. And if you've got anything to say, let me know in the comments section. Thanks again for joining me, and I hope that you have a great rest of the day.